I'm Julian Ceres from Aix Marseille University, and my talk is entitled Navigation Possibilities Without GPS or 5G, the Unbot Solution. It presents research carried out in Marseille, France, at the Institute of Movement Sciences, ISM, by the Biorobotics Department. I will start by describing the research approach for biorobotics and the current basis of autonomous navigation, then why desert ants are an inspiring model for navigation and explain the polarized light coming from the sky dome, especially in the ultraviolet range. Next, I will talk about the design of an ant-inspired optical compass implemented on board a hexapod robot called Handbot. I will also describe the celestial compass level of performance and show its navigational results in real conditions. Finally, I will introduce the next project called Mimi Compass, which is an inexpensive version of our optical compass for industrial purposes. Let's start with the research approach for biorobotics. This approach consists of studying animal behavior and their sensory modalities, for me particularly insects, the bio-inspired sensors working on both terrestrial or aerial robots achieve a behavior similar to that of the animal world, thanks to these studies. Therefore, this represents a double challenge. On the one hand, it allows us to develop technological solutions to robotics problems, but also to test hypotheses on the navigation and to find new ones. This virtual cycle generates new ideas, and this is how I have been conducting my research for 17 years. As a result, one of the challenges is how insects can navigate with precision when their visual system has so few photoreceptors. Now, let's move on to the current basis of autonomous navigation to better understand the current gap between how insects and robots navigate. So, what are the standard sensors on board an autonomous vehicle? A series of sensors like LIDAR, radar, or GPS, but no sensor works in all conditions. For example, both darkness and direction will blind a camera, whereas LIDAR is blind at sunrise and sunset, thus deteriorating the location estimation. If it were easy to develop autonomous vehicles, they will already be on sale. Firstly, Combining sensor outputs is necessary to provide quick and accurate location. Secondly, most sensors rely on either emissive onboard systems or receiving artificial electromagnetic waves coming from the GPS or the future 5G terrestrial network. Thirdly, for autonomous vehicles, a stationary map is not reliable to guarantee safe navigation. The expected route can be disturbed by pedestrians, other road users, or road works. Now let's move on to smart city with a 5G terrestrial network. What will 5G bring us? We hear a lot about smart cities where a 5G network connects users, vehicles, and institutions. On one hand, this network is 10 times faster than the existing 5G, and this will greatly improve the quality and range of services. On the other hand, this network will require, require a very dense infrastructure. This will provide accurate location to around one centimeter, but will vastly increase the level of ambient radiation and will be enormously expensive, with the costs being passed on to the users. However, 5G is an unavoidable requirement for the concept of a smart city, because autonomous 
vehicles sending their location and receiving instructions in real time will maintain the operation of the city. This is not a failure of your computer. This is a blackout. But what is a blackout? It is an environmental situation in which all localization techniques fail. It is perhaps difficult to imagine such circumstances, but they are quite plausible. The combination of quite ordinary and catastrophic events during which GPS signals can be simultaneously lost because they are obscured by buildings and the 5G antennas are too far away of, or if there was a widespread power failure. Moreover, GPS or 5G signals can be easily be blocked by a 350 euro jammer available on the internet. As a result, a smart city emitting artificial electromagnetic waves can easily be jammed. We could therefore be victims of terrorist attacks making our future smart cities inoperable. All in all, by combining, combining this with disasters linked to climate change, this blackout scenario is more than realistic. In our future smart cities, wouldn't it be acceptable to leave inoperable robots on the pavements, on the road, in the same way that we find abandoned electric scooters all over the cities today? Therefore, the robots must be always be able to locate themselves and reach a safe area while waiting for the smart city to come back online. On the other hand, Biomimicry offers us the possibility to locate ourselves without resorting the smart city, such as, for example, reproducing the invisible Hariadne's thread of the desert ant so that we can continue to navigate by sight. It is actually surprisingly difficult to disorientate ants because they combine information from different sources to navigate. Now I'm going to talk about desert ants as an inspiring model for navigation. To illustrate my point, here is the journey of an ant in the Tunisian desert. It is an ant that measures only 10 millimeters and is capable, capable of making foraging journeys of more than one kilometer. Here, six hundred meters for the outward journey, then 400 meters in a straight line for the return. Furthermore, the ant is very short-sighted, i.e. with a poor visual acuity about 7 to 10 degrees. This doesn't prevent the ant from being precise and running very fast at more than one meter per second. The ant's long legs lift its body off the ground in order to resist to the heat, which eliminates any possibilities of a pheromone track because the ground is about 50 to 70 degrees Celsius. The navigation of the ant is therefore almost exclusively based on vision despite poor neuronal capabilities only 250,000 neurons in its tiny brain. But what are their navigational instruments? Desert ants use a powerful navigational tool termed path integration, which is a kind of an invisible Harriet knees thread. When returning to the nest using the shortest possible route, a straight line, even in featureless or unfamiliar terrains. By integrating a directional compass and distance information, the ants obtain a vector which leads then home. 120 years ago, Henri Piron observed for the first time this striking behavior. Over 60 years, Professor Rudiger Wiener has focused 
is research on desert ant Cataglyphis fortis to understand the hand navigational toolkit in the Tunisian desert. They observed by moving the hand in a box that the hand went back home in parallel towards a translated expected point following a kind of invisible Hariatni's thread called today a visual path integrator process. Today, Antoine Vistrache from the Research Center on Animal Cognition, Toulouse, France, works on the Andalusian desert ant that navigates the tussocks of grass over 60 meters by combining path integrator process and visual guidance process. Antoine Vistrache has developed an ant neuronal model to explain how ants work in such a complex environment. To navigate autonomously in the desert and to home, ants use idiometric cues, ventral optic flow and stride counting, and heading cues based on not only the polarized light coming from the sky dome, but also the sun position. Ants also use visual guidance strategies based on snapshot matching between current view and familiar views to get back home. Finally, they can use olfaction in the neighborhood of the nest. In my lecture, we will focus on heading detection based on polarized light in the UV range. The next section will talk about the sky's polarization pattern. So what's the pattern of the sky's polarization? According to Rayleigh scattering model, the sun's light coming from the sky is polarized, which means that this light can be characterized by its degree of polarization, DLP, and its angle of polarization, AOP. The degree of polarization is stronger not only at 90 degrees from the sun, but also at low wavelengths, especially in the UV range. According to the Rayleigh really model, the patterns of the polarized light from the sky can be seen as concentric circles centered around the sun in which we can detect a salient feature represented here by a black line. To illustrate the state of polarization of the sky here, we can see two polar polarizing filters used to cover our photoreceptors. When we rotate these polarizing filters in the sky, its hue changes, then it allows us to detect the angle of polarization AOP. Insects, such as bees or ants, have on the upper part of their high a specialized zone call the dorsal rim area and measure the angle of polarization with about 1,200 UV sensitive photoreceptors to accurately measure their heading. Now I'm going to talk about the advantages of the ultraviolet range. Why will we work with ultraviolet range? Here it is clearly shown that the percentage of scattering of the direct sunlight is larger in the UV range than in the visible range. In addition, it has been shown that the degree of polarization is also higher in the UV range. Bartha and Horvath in 2004 gave an explanation of the UV range preference in insects by showing that the UV range is strongly resilient to cloud coverage. Finally, this panoramic view of the sky here in the visible range shows that the sky dome can provide a salient cue for estimating the heading of animals and potentially autonomous robots.
Next, I'm going to talk about the design of Antbot's celestial compass. On the left, we can see the Antbot, which is a hexapod robot endowed with several visual sensors mimicking the compound eye of an ant. Antbot is fitted with an optic flow sensor looking downward to optically estimate its travel distance. Antbot is also fitted with a two pixel celestial compass that detects the state of polarization of the sky's light in the UV range. This compass provides an optical heading while navigating outdoors with excellent performance regardless of the environmental conditions. By combining distance, measurement and heading, we have shown that Antbot is able to perform path integration to home with a great accuracy, about 0.5% of the travel distance. However, we know that desert ants can also use visual guidance to find their way home. The wavelength selectivity of the Antbot Celestial Compass is maximal at 343 nanometers, right in the middle of the UV range, close to the one of desert ants. 350 nanometers. Antbot is fitted with two photodetectors from SG Lux, each one covered with a polarizing filter from Night Optical. No lens is required to detect the celestial heading, and the Ewing cone of each photodetector is plus or minus 60 degrees. To scan the sky dome, unfortunately, a mechanical device is extremely slow. Since the output signals were at 0.25 Hz and thus required 4 seconds to scan the sky dome, a stepper motor comprising 374 steps was used to ensure a detection with a resolution of 0.96 degree. To process the visual signals provided by our optical compass, we took our inspiration from what we know to be in the pole neuron of a locust brain. It was suggested by Labart and colleagues that the visual processing in the locust brain consists of implementing the log ratio of two output signals from two adjacent photoreceptors. These two photodetectors have polarizing filters called microvii oriented perpendicularly to each other. Such a bio-inspired approach requires extremely low computational resources to find their heading. By rotating the two polarizing filters placed on top of the two photodetectors, following the malus law, we obtain two signals in opposed phases due to the initial orientation of the pair of polarizing filters at right angles as previously described by taking the mean and max values of the log ratio of these two visual signals, we show that we can measure the heading with a great accuracy about 0.4 degree. Now I'm going to talk about the celestial compasses level of performance. We compared here our method for estimating the heading call the Antbot method to four previous methods. Our Antbot method achieved the best accuracy in all weather conditions. In addition, we tested our compass under foliage and on board a vehicle fixed onto the roof of a car and its performance remained constant. In conclusion, the Antbot method has three major advantages over existing solutions in optical heading detection. First, an accuracy from 0.4 degree to 0.6 degree. Second, resiliency even in poor weather or under foliage. Finally, no mathematical ambiguity, it does not require an arctangent function to compute the heading. Next, 
I'm going to talk about the Unbot navigation system working in real world conditions. To measure the travel distance, the robot integrates the optical scrolling speed coming from the ground with a MAPEX sensor, which was designed in collaboration with CPPM, a joint research unit of my institute. MAPEX is a self-adaptive optic flow sensor working over seven decades of brightness that is to say, from moonlight to sunlight, equipped with only 12 photodetectors, which operates in the visible range. MAPIX is the ideal optical sensor for measuring optic flow outdoors. In this short video, we can see Handbot working from its starting point, Unbot is fitted with a battery and can work for about 15, 15 minutes. That's why you can see a power supply with a cable to work all day. Unbot is motorized within servo motors, consuming a large amount of energy and highly sensitive to outdoor temperature with a maximal working temperature up to 70 degrees Celsius. It was quite difficult to make Unbot generate more than 10 trajectories of 15 meters without having to change one servo motor because the plastic gears were particularly fragile, mostly during summertime experimentation. After that, I'm going to conclude about the Unbot robot. Then I will talk about some future projects. The Unbot results were published in 2019 in Science Robotics. The Unbot uses the ultraviolet radiation to find its heading and the visible light to find the travel distance. The homing error was about 6.7 cm on average after a 15 meters journey, which represents about 0.5% of the travel distance. This few 6.7 cm are lower than the unbought step equal to 8.2 cm showing that our elementary step was not a limitation of our visual odometry approach. However, our relative error of 0.5% is in the range of errors generated by conventional approach in visual odometry close to 1%. One limitation of the unbought celestial compass is its output refresh rate to steer in real time. I'm now working on a new project called Mimi Compass in order to measure optical heading in real time. It makes it compatible with the industry demands. Or industrial partners like Peugeot Citroën or Safran Electronics and Defense are with a great interest in developing such bio-inspired navigation system because it works without GPS nor 5G network. In conclusion, firstly, the handbot compass works with an accuracy from 0.4 degree in clear sky to 0.6 degree in cloudy sky. Secondly, the Antbot's path integrator can arm with an error of about 0.5% of the travel distance. 
a new project called Mimi Compass Celestial Compass has been started to address a low cost solution for robotics services, e.g. autonomous delivery services. Mimi Compass will be 40 times faster than Anbot and does not need a mechanical rotative system to scan the sky dome. Integration and miniaturization of the Mimi Compass Celestial Compass is underway. I would like to thank my co worker Stéphane Violet my PhD student, Julien Dupérou, my engineers, Marc Boiron and Julien Dipéry, my English reviewer, David Wood, and the webinar organizer, Thomas Inches. The Unbot robot was the winner of the seventh International Bionic Award in 2020. Thank you for your attention.